This is amazing, amazing, amazing. Everybody, what's up? It's me, Rosalie. Welcome back to the Ultimate YouTube channel, all about reactions, world music, psychology, and so much more. I'm happy you're here. Click that subscribe button and let's dive straight in. I want to honor a request that I was given today and check out a Norwegian hip hop duo, Omar Sheriff, live from Oslo Spectrum, from the Oslo Spectrum Arena back in August 2022. And uh, shout out today goes to Annie. Thank you so much for your support for this suggestion. I was told that it might be fitting. Because this uh, project, Omar Sheriff, is a story about roots, belonging, family, and upbringing. And it's this mix of tradition and languages. So I'm very excited to check it out. It's a musical fusion, I was told, of cultures using Norwegian, Arabic, Hindi, English, French language in the songs. And Guarati. So we're going to check it out. This sounds perfect for this channel, actually. So shout out to you, Ani. Thank you for this suggestion and for your patience. And let's check it out. If you want to make a request, you can submit them on Buy Me a Coffee. Check out the link in the description below. So är det föräldrar våra som bara har jobbat och hållt käft utan att någon har inviterat dem till dagsnytt 18 för att snacka om yttringsrummet eller något annat. För dem som prövar att förbereda sig på att dö i ett främmande land har den klissete kaka eller koppen med allt för söt te varit den billigaste och raskaste biljetten hem. Sorgen när en förälder är i färd med att försvinna är självklart inte förbehållt oss migrantbarn. Men den får ett extra lag hos oss. Kanske för att vi mister vår viktigaste kobling till en del av världen som de tog med hit. Vi, barna deras, är troende och trolösa skamfulla och skamlösa rotfästa och rotlösa Vi var barn där vi fyllde ut schemaer för föräldrar våra ringte kundeservice på deras vägna och skrev kondolanskort som skulle till deras norska vänner Vi var barn där resten av Norge lova sketcher där det enaste poängen var att folk snacka som föräldrar våra gjorde En dag efterlater de oss här, mellan städerna de förlot och städerna de prövade att bli en del av. När det blir vår tur vill vi se tillbaka för att försikra oss och dem om att vi klart att komma ett skritt närmare. Okej. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna um keep listening in a second. These the subtitles are very important here. Um and I won't read through all of them. I hope you can see them in the in the screen or when you look at this video yourself. Ideally, I always want to encourage the viewers to do that, to check out the links in the description, go subscribe to these artists and listen to this work yourself, um, so we can get the views on those actual channels up as well. But the gist of this this introduction here to me is speaking of families that come from various countries, immigrants and the parents, and when they pass away, what it does to the children and how the children, the next generation, loses the part of the world that they had brought with them, that is part of them. And so what I'm hearing here is a topic, uh, the idea of identity, of belonging, the struggle, the suffering of when you lose or when you leave a home, when you go somewhere new, even the top, even the topic of you know, the jokes that are made by the rest of, in this case, Norway, Norway um, where the people in, in the jokes talk like this person's parents did. To me, that sounds like, I, I think it's meant to say, you know, comedy and jokes and, you know, these funny clips where people are trying to be silly are they're speaking with the accent that immigrants speak, speak with. And I can definitely see that even in Germany, you know, even growing up where, you know, people might be trying to be silly and sound like a foreigner, sound like an immigrant, right? Have some type of dialect, some type of accent. Um, even here in America, right? We find that where people may make jokes, make light, and they'll imitate an accent of someone that does not speak proper English. And I don't mean proper in the sense of correct. I mean, in the sense of with an accent, right? Um, or, you know, and that goes in for all cultures. You may have some who make fun of Southern accents, right? Y'all and how to do, you know, the country accent, the Southern 
of America. But here, I think it's this reference point of having been the subject of ridicule, um, not belonging quite, not fitting in, and trying to take a step closer, trying to get closer as the next generation to that goal, perhaps, of finding a new home, of belonging. There's a whole lot that we could talk about here when it comes to immigration, families, generations, and I can already see this is going to hit home. But let's, let's, let's keep listening, and then we'll see what we can pull out here. But let me know in the comments as you listen to this, what that evokes in you. Yeah. We managed to get one step closer. Um, one step closer to what would be my question, perhaps to arriving in this new land as an immigrant, per perhaps to belonging to a people, maybe to be less other than, less divided, maybe to create a home somewhere. Uh, very interesting and very fitting timing to review something like this with everything going on in, in the world and, you know, claims on lands and people trying to figure out which side they're for or against and seeking justice for people. Everyone wants a home. Everyone wants to be able to arrive somewhere and thrive and see their next generations thriving. Let's, let's keep listening. I love her voice. Hold on, let me pause real quick and then I go back. Ferus means victorious, triumphant. Ferus in Arabic means victorious. Okay, I want to make sure I understood what that word means. I want to go back just a bit. On top of the world. Does that look like a cage? Is that meant to look like a cage? The harmonies between the violin and her voice. Wow. You know, that's ultimately what a voice is, another instrument. Wow, this is going to probably make me cry. was cool.
Now, baraf is ice or snow in Hindi and Urdu. So to say brown feet in baraf, brown feet in the, in the ice and the snow, right? It's that contrast between the brown feet in, in snow, which would be fitting to Norway, Nor- Norway right? Or, or any of those European countries where there is snow. You have brown feet, you have immigrants, you have people from the Arabic countries, African countries, from various countries, melanated people, brown feet that are coming to these places of ice and snow. Not only literally speaking, right, as a country, Norway and, and, and the like, but even the contrast between brown and white um, between different cultures. Insha'Allah means, you know, God willing. Oh, these lyrics are interesting. Talking about, you know, these, this, the different fashion and whatnot, these different things. Those are things they're wearing on the outside. Get me, man. This is amazing. This is amazing. 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 Thank you so much for this suggestion. Wow. So when uh, usually if I see people crying at a concert, a lot of times it may be I may think, okay, um, you know, they're so in love with this artist. It's like huge hype. A lot of it is, I think. 
you know, the emotion evoked when you're in a, in a group. It's similar to like a church setting. You know, there's something emotional about being in a group with uh, the same purpose, coming together for the same cause. You find that at churches and various religious organizations where a larger group of people come together to worship the same God or to support the same cause. That's why you have people getting very intense in their emotions at rallies, at protests, um, where people who may usually on their own not be prone to this type of behavior or may not have the courage to, in a crowd, they'll get hyped up and they'll be willing to do all kinds of stuff. And you'll have masses looting and, and running around screaming, or you'll have people protesting. There's something that gets people excited. There's something about it, that solidarity, that community. You have it, as I said, in religious circles where you feel a sense of togetherness, you feel community, you feel something spiritual. You have it at concerts where people are crying, again, maybe because of admiration for the artists, disbelief that this person is really in front of them because it's some, of, some type of idol to them, or because of the emotion of the masses. Here when I saw the people cry, though for some of them it may really be because they love these artists and the music and this huge crowd all together for the same cause is quite emotional. Here I felt like some of this, some of the responses of the people in the crowd were because of, for one, how amazing these musical compositions are. I mean, what a feast for the musical taste buds, for the ears and for the eyes, for the senses, but also because of what was being sung. This, this pain, this beautiful ode, in my opinion, the way I'm interpreting this, immigrants, the people who have come, who have traveled afar, tried to find a home, in this case in Norway, who have hurt, who have suffered, who are being victorious, who are on the top of the world now. And when you've been through suffering, when you can relate to that, especially as a foreigner, I see a lot of, I see very, a lot of diversity in the audience, which is beautiful. But you see people here who, um, where I could, I wouldn't be surprised if they know that, that struggle of being asked, why do you do this? Why do you do that? That struggle of having all these health issues, that pain of not coming out of your apartment, the fear of not belonging somewhere, not wanting to go to the gym, not wanting to get out of your apartment, not fitting in, being those brown feet in the snow, in the ice. The uh, So this du duo, the Norwegian rap duo Karpe, consists of audiovisual artists Shirak Rashmikant, Patel, and Magdi Omar Abdelmaguit. Since their debut release in 2004, they've risen to become the biggest band in Norway, it says in the description, always raising the bar when it comes to audiovisual concepts, productions, and releases. I can definitely see how their visuals, how their work, these compositions are masterpieces. It makes me think of... It makes me think of um, artists like Idan Reichel, who is Israeli, but he brings in various artists, uh, Arabic-speaking singing artists, Ethiopian, all kinds of different cultures. And it's so beautiful because he blends in, he brings in these different languages, cultures, religions, um, and, it's, and makes art. And especially you know, from an Israeli, that's powerful and important, I feel like, especially collaborations between Arabic and the Jewish or the Israeli side. Um, but here I feel like there's also this feeling of various artists, various languages. This lady that was singing, oh my gosh, that was the most beautiful touch. And then even the, um, I don't know who all was involved in this project, but this was amazing. And we have got to go subscribe to them. Make sure you go check out the link below and subscribe to Omar Sharif. And uh, listen to this song, Baraf Fayrut, featuring Jonas Benjup. Is that the guy that was the, 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 the latter part? They're like that, our parents, who just worked and kept quiet, never being invited to newsrooms to talk about free speech or whatever. Um, to me, really, that fits that, that, that is a, this, this topic about, you know, immigrants. They're going somewhere. They're working hard. They're keeping quiet. They're not being asked about free speech. They're not being asked to talk about their experiences on the news, right? The people in the newsroom are the high and mighty. You still have a bunch of people sharing their opinions who are of some sort of status, not the actual immigrants, the actual people suffering and hurting and working. and trying to make it do in a new world. And this is so fitting and so timely because I think the same thing could be said for even these issues with Israel and, and Palestine, right? Where you have people, we all want to have an opinion about it, we all want to talk about it, but how much of the people speaking on this are actually the people on the ground, the day-to-day -day people just trying to survive and trying to live and thrive. For those who are pre preparing to die in a foreign country, it's the gooey cake or the cup of way too sweet tea. <laughs> the cup of way too sweet tea. Yeah, I think a lot of times Arabic uh, tea in Arabic and African countries, um, it's common that they have tea and they ha drink it very, very sweet. That has been the cheapest and quickest ticket home. Interesting. So this way of going home when you're homesick, this way of being connected to your home by having the gooey cake and that way too sweet tea. Right When you can't go home, you don't have a ticket home, it's too long of a journey, it's expensive, but you can have a tea and a cake and you, you feel like back at home. And I can relate to that. I consider myself an immigrant to a degree. I'm 
Cuban and German, not second, third, fourth generation. I'm not talking about, oh, my great, great grandfather. I'm talking first generation mom, full blood German, dad, full blood Cuban, came to America when they fled Castro as a child. He joined the army, was deployed in Germany. Boom, bada bang. Here I came and four other siblings of mine born and raised in Germany. I speak English well because I grew up bilingual. Um, and so at home we spoke German and English. I know a little bit of Spanish. I learned some French in school. I picked up languages through traveling the right world, be it words in Hebrew or Arabic or Swahili. Don't speak those languages, though. I wish I did. And so to me, in Germany, I never felt typical German. I stood out as the also Cuban-American, right? You can hear in my accent, American slang accent when I speak English. You see in my behavior, in my aneurysms, these, the, the, the Latina in the features, then you see Then I'm here in America and I tap into my German side and I'm not just fully American, um, have those Cuban roots, not fully fitting into the Cuban community at times because I don't speak Spanish fluently. And so I always have felt like I'm not quite, I don't quite fit in anywhere exactly, which was beneficial after a while in my search for identity and belonging because then I adapted more easily, went to Tanzania and you dress alike, you learn some Swahili, you know, you adapt and you fit in well or in Israel. And Palestine, you know, it was not hard for me to fit in and to adapt to the culture and to take it on. So there's pros and cons to not fitting in anywhere <laughs> and not quite knowing where you belong. And when you have, when you're in a foreign country, when I get homesick for Germany, I love to go to Aldi or Lidl and I, I, I love enjoying German treats or cooking something German at home or tapping into my, my Cuban side and savoring and cherishing those parts of my heritage. It makes you feel connected to home. The sorrow when a parent is about to fade away is, of course, not unique to us migrant kids. So here, very clearly about migration, about immigration and foreigners going to a foreign land. But to us, it comes with an extra layer. So you see, they're basically pointing out this is not just about a parent passing. That's painful for anybody. It's not unique just to migrant kids, but there's an extra layer as a migrant child because that parent passing is that final tie you have to your homeland, to the, where you originally came from. We, their children, are believers and non-believers, shameful and shameless. And I think this too here is a, perhaps a way of saying we're all different. There's believers and non-believers, right? There's Muslims, non-Muslims, Christians, atheists. Just because someone comes from a certain country does not by default make them one or the other, right? People often think Arab means Muslim. It's not correct at all. In Palestine, there's many Arabic Christians. People may think, oh, you know, everybody's the same. They want to box in. You know, you have those who hate, oh, immigrants, whatever. They're bringing in shame. They're bringing in their whatever, radicalism or whatnot. And then you have those who, who are not like that at all. You have those who bring violence. You have those who bring peace. And that goes for every single human being, every single person. That would go for Norwegians going into another land. That would go for Americans going to Africa. You know, you have those who are believers and unbelievers, those who are rooted and rootless. We are quick to, because it makes us feel more safe and in control, box people in. But there's a variety among any people group of what, what type of people they are. We were kids when we filled out forms for our parents, right? Because the kids often spoke English or the, 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 land, the language of the land. In, in, Norway, in Norway, Norwegian, the kids often, due to education or schooling, would help their parents fill out the paperwork called customer service on their behalf and wrote condolence letters to their Norwegian friends. So really shedding light on what it's like as a migrant child, right? Yeah, you help your parents out because they don't speak the language. And some people may say, well, why don't the parents just learn? Well, if the parents are busy just working, trying to make a better life for their children or they're not leaving their apartment. And even as adults, it is harder to learn a language. Kids who are fully immersed in school, they'll pick up the language much faster. We were kids when the rest of Norway laughed at skits where the only joke was that they talked like our parents, you see? So jokes that are made where people speak like a foreigner. For these migrant children, that's what their parents talk like. And uh, I think this, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, after the video was over, is one of the reasons why I think there was also a lot of crying and emotional response from the audience beyond, wow, this is such an amazing musical experience, immersion, composition. This is personal. This is suffering. This is hurt. People know what they're talking about here. One day our parents will leave us here, in this case, I believe in Norway, between the places they parted with and the places they tried to be part of. Wow, right? Where you come from and where you've gone, come to. When it's our turn, we'll look back to reassure ourselves and them, right? We'll look back. You look back into the past. You try to reassure yourself, your children, the next generation, and your parents. We, made, we managed to get one step closer, perhaps one step closer to making it a home, being part of it, trying to be part of a place. You know, and this is really relevant. This was a fantastic suggestion because I, I could see that being just as applicable in 
any any conversation migration in in Norway in Germany in European countries migration here right all these debates about wall or no wall what type of border regulations right it's a big it's a tricky topic right we're not going to get too political but borders are an illusion at the end of the day right man made constructs of who belongs what belongs to who at the same time there's a need for regulations when it comes to finances money right welfare Right. As a taxpayer, you want to know where your money is going to. You don't want to just have a government take a bunch of your money and then give it to people who may or may not want to work. You have people who are willing to work, who come from horrible conditions, who need refuge, who should be taken care of and receive help. You have those who want to capitalize on a system that they're not contributing to. It's very it's complicated. And I know some people don't like that. I think sometimes people have an apprehension towards hearing it's complicated. Because it's scary. The, when something's complicated, it means it's harder to control, it's harder to grasp, it's harder to solve. And that's scary. It's hard work. It holds us accountable to do the hard work, to try to figure things out. And so sometimes it's easier just to get mad and say, ah, it's not complicated. Actually, it's easy. But in my opinion, uh, from an economic and political standpoint, it's complicated. But at the end of the day, when we're looking at it from a psychological standpoint or even a philosophical one, These people are people that are hurting. And so there's this dance between not wanting to forget where you come from, wanting to bring your culture, and you shouldn't have to be expected to leave it at the door, right? I don't think that the answer is you go somewhere now. Oh, you know, you're now a Norwegian. You're now a German. You're now American. Leave your culture at the door. Don't bring your tea and your gooey cake and don't bring your burqa. Don't bring your head covering or your religion. You're us now. But what does it mean to be us? What is an American? What is a Norwegian, right? These are uh, foreigners themselves. I don't, I'd say that I do. These are technically foreigners themselves. They're not, you know, Norwegian by birth, but they're one of the biggest bands in, Nor- in Norway. In, Nor- in, in, in Norway, they're being honored there. They're being respected. They've made a name for themselves. They've made it to the top. I mean, imagine being a foreigner coming from a foreign land, going through these struggles, or your parents or your grandparents, and now you've made it, and you are a big band, a popular band, loved by many Norwegians in Norway, a place that was not originally your home. Gener- in generations past. Now it is, but in generations past, not originally. Brown feet straight in the snow. Now we're drinking wine out of decanters. Hairy goals, tarantula. Peer pressure jokes like have one more. Right? Peer pressure trying to fit in. Virus on top of the world. Can you tell my dear what I have carried? Right? So this, this, this contrast between having made it, being on top of the world, but knowing, remembering what you've carried, what you've been through. And then the part where it spoke of, it was a clementine from Morocco. It was almost like a dream. Do you have to eat malban? Why do you have, why do you add five teaspoons? Why don't you ever leave the apartment? Malban, what is malban? Malban is Lebanese candies. Why don't you ever leave the apartment, right? A lot of migrants who are working or staying in their apartments in their little communities. And people may ask these questions. Why do you think this happened? Why do you say you feel better? Why don't you say it hurts? Why can't you tell the doctor? Why do you lie to the doctor? Why do you have to be so dumb, right? These insults that are given towards, towards foreigners, when a lot of times they speak more languages than your average, you know, civilian does, right? The people are ridiculed because they look different. Or why do they eat this type of food? Why do you put so many teaspoons in your tea? Why do you not leave your apartment? Why are you lying to the doctor? Not realizing the plight a lot of people may be afraid to go to or tell the doctor what's really going on out of fear of being separated from their families or deported if they were if they came illegally or afraid to leave the apartment for the same reasons or because they don't know have anywhere to go imagine being in a foreign land and you don't know what's what it was hard enough for me even when i came to america even though i've visited america as a child lived here for a year when i came as an adult and i didn't intend to stay and then i ended up starting a family even though i spoke english and i'm a u.s citizen through naturalization, home was Germany and traveling all around the world. And so as an adult now, it was not easy even speaking the language and having been here before, having lived here as a child for a year, having visited, having a Cuban-American father, it was not easy to find what, what works and who does what, and where you go for what, right? It, it, it was being so far away from your family is painful. Now imagine coming from a place that is ridden with war, with poverty, with, with suffering, where you're escaping. Or imagine coming to a place and you don't speak the language. Imagine coming to a place you're being ridiculed because you look different. It's just there's suffering and pain out there that we don't know what it's like unless we've experienced it. So go through all these different health issues. Why don't you just go to the gym? Why do you think you need insulin? Why do you get high blood pressure? Um, Perhaps this part is not only speaking about actual, you know, health matters somatically, but also psychosomatically, right? The anxiety, the suffering that comes with being a migrant and that pain and now having health problems from it as a result. 
Why don't you get some exercise? Why don't you? Why? Cytokines are small proteins that are crucial in controlling the growth and activity of other immune system cell and blood cells. When they're released, they signal the immune system to do its job. Interesting. So it's saying, I'm not, it talks about all these health matters, and then it says, I'm not, Baba means father, I'm not a lighthouse. And they're reporting cytokine storms, immune system storms. After talking about all these health issues, it also makes me think of not just physically when you're ill, when you're ailed and your immune system needs to fight, and there's this storm, but also psychologically speaking, all these obstacles, all this, all this ailment in the system. And we could look at that politically. We could look at that from an economic standpoint. We could look at that from a sociological standpoint, the issues that come with a society when you have people from different countries, different languages and cultures, the pain that comes with trying to have a better place for your family, trying to raise somebody up in a, in a place that is safe and home, yet not being at home, yet not fitting in and hoping with it, every generation you get it a little closer. I just have disco lights on. This was really, really amazing. The musical composition here, I love the rap parts. I love that marriage between hip-hop and elements of, of um, EDM, uh, the beats that were very strong, that gave it a, a powerful feel. It created a lot of impact. I love the harmonization between the vocals and the violin and those orchestral elements that really added a lot of emotion. This was absolutely beautiful. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next ride. Hey, yo.